Chapter Twenty Six of the American Housewife. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lindy. The American Housewife by Anonymous. Chapter Twenty Six. The Whole Art of Carving. Preliminary Remarks. The carving knife should be light of middling size, and of a fine edge. Strength is less required than skill in the manner of using it, and to facilitate this, the butcher should be directed to divide the joints of the bones of all carcass joints of mutton, lamb, and veal, such as neck, breast, and loin, which then may easily be cut into thin slices attached to the bones. If the whole of the meat belonging to each bone should be too thick, a small slice may be taken off between every two bones. The more fleshy joints, as fillets of veal, leg or saddle of mutton and beef, are to be helped in thin slices, neatly cut and smooth. Observe to let the knife pass down to the bone in the mutton and beef joints. The dish should not be too far off the carver, as it gives an awkward appearance and makes the task more difficult. Attention is to be paid to help every one to a part of such articles as are considered best. In helping fish, take care not to break the flakes, which in cod and very fresh salmon are large, and contribute much to the beauty of its appearance. A fish knife not being sharp divides it best. Help a part of the roe milt or liver to each person. The heads of carp, part of those of cod and salmon, sounds of cod, and fins of turbot, are likewise esteemed niceties, and are to be attended to accordingly. In cutting up any wild fowl, duck, goose, or turkey, for a large party, if you cut the slices down from pinion to pinion, without making wings, there will be more handsome pieces. 1. Sirloin of Beef This may be begun at either end, or by cutting in the middle. It is usual to inquire whether the outside or inside is preferred. For the outside, the slice should be cut down to the bones, and the same with every following helping. Slice the inside likewise, and give with each piece some of the soft fat. The inside done in the following manner, is excellent. Have ready some shallot vinegar, boiling hot. Mince the meat large, and a good deal of the fat. Sprinkle it with salt, and pour the vinegar and the gravy on it. Help with a spoon as quickly as possible on hot plates. 2. H or edge bone of beef. Cut off a slice, an inch thick, all the length from A to B, and then help. The soft fat, which resembles marrow, lies at the back of the bone, below D. The firm fat must be cut in horizontal slices at the edge of the meat, C. The skewer, used in keeping the meat together while boiling, is shown at A, which should be drawn out before served up, or, if necessary to leave it in, place instead one of silver. 3. Shoulder of Mutton this is a very good joint, and by many preferred to the leg, for, if properly roasted, it abounds in gravy, and produces many nice bits. The figure annexed represents it as laid in the dish, with its back uppermost. It should first be cut in the hollow part, in the direction A, B, and the knife pass deep to the bone. The best part of the fat lies on the outer edge, and it is to be cut out in thin slices, in the direction F. If many are at the table, and the hollow part cut in the line A, B is eaten, some very good and delicate slices may be cut out on each side the ridge of the blade bone, in the direction C, D. The line between these two dotted lines is that in the direction of which the edge or ridge of the blade bone lies, and cannot be cut across. It is necessary to wind writing paper around the shank 
as in the leg, provided you wish to handle it. The lower side of the shoulder has two cuts abounding in gravy. The part in the direction I, K is lean. The other, G, H, is very fat. 4. Knuckle of veal. A knuckle of veal cuts in neat slices only in one direction, viz. from A to B. The line D, C divides two bones, which it is necessary to separate in order to get at the best marrowy fat portion, also cut asunder the knuckle bones. 5. Roasted breast of veal. Cut to the left on the first line D, C then cross from C to the most distant A. The lines A, D, A, D, etc. represent the directions in which the brisket, or grisly part, should be divided. D, C show the course of the ribs, and E is the sweetbread. 6. A spare rib. Cut out first a slice from the fleshy portion, following the line A, B. This will give a due proportion of fat and lean. After this part is taken away, the bone line in the direction D, B, C should be separated, breaking it off at the joint C. 7. Saddle of mutton. Cut long thin slices from the tail to the end, viz. from A to B, beginning close to the backbone. If a large joint, the slice may be divided. Cut some fat from the sides. 8. Pig. The cook usually divides the body before it is sent to the table, and garnishes the dish with the jaws and ears. The first thing is to separate the shoulder from the carcass on one side, and then the leg, according to the direction given by the dotted line A, B, C. The ribs are then to be divided into about two helpings, and an ear or jaw presented with them, and plenty of sauce. The joints may either be divided into two each, or pieces may be cut from them. The ribs are reckoned the finest part, but some people prefer the neck, and between the shoulders. 9. Half a calf's head, boiled. Be careful, and get a young one, as they look much handsomer served up, and besides are more tender. First, Cut in the direction C, B. The throat bread is considered the choicest part. It lies in the fleshy portion near the termination of the jawbone, and the line C, D shows the direction to cut into it. On the under part of the lower jaw there is some very nice meat, and about the ear, G, some fat, rather grisly, but highly esteemed. The part near the neck is very inferior. Sometimes the bone in the line F, E is cut off, but this is a coarse part. The sweet tooth is quite a delicacy. It lies back of all the rest, and, in a young calf, is easily extracted with the knife. Many like the eye, which you must cut out with the point of your knife and divide in two. Under the head is the palate, which is reckoned a nicety. 10. Leg of mutton. A leg of weather mutton, which is best flavored, may be known at the market by a round lump of fat at the edge of the broadest part, a little above the letter A. The best part is midway between the knuckle and farther end. Begin to help there by cutting thin slices to B. If the outside is not fat enough, help some from the side at the broad end in slices from E to F. This part is most juicy, but many prefer the knuckle, which, in fine mutton, will be very tender, though dry. There are very fine slices in the back of the leg. Turn it up, and cut the broad end, not in the direction you did the other side, but lengthwise. To cut out the cramp bone, take hold of the shank, which should be previously wound round with half a sheet of foolscap paper with your left hand, and cut down to the thigh bone at G, then pass the knife under the cramp bone in the direction G, D. 11. Ham. Ham may be cut three ways. The common method is to begin in the middle, 
by long slices from B to C, from the center through the thick fat. This brings to the prime at first, which is likewise accomplished by cutting a small round hole on the top of the ham, as at A, and with a sharp knife enlarging that, by cutting successive thin circles. This preserves the gravy, and keeps the meat moist. The last and most saving way is to begin at the hock end, which many are most fond of, and proceed onward. Ham that is used for pies, etc., should be cut from the underside. 12. Four quarter of lamb. Separate the shoulder from the breast and ribs by passing the knife under in the direction of A, B, C, and D. Be careful to keep it towards you horizontally to prevent cutting the meat too much off the bones. If grass lamb, the shoulder being large, put it into another dish. Squeeze the juice of half a severe orange or lemon on the other part, and sprinkle a little salt and pepper. Then separate the grisly part from the ribs, in the line E, C, and help either from that or from the ribs, as may be chosen. 13. Haunch of venison. First, cut it down to the bone, in the line D, C, A. Then, turn the dish with the end A towards you. Put in the point of the knife at C, and cut it down as deep as you can in the direction C, B. Thus cut, you may take out as many slices as you please on the right or left. As the fat lies deeper on the left, between B and A, to those who are fond of fat, as most venison eaters are, the best flavored and fattest slices will be found on the left of the line C, B, supposing the end A turned towards you. Slices of venison should not be cut too thick nor too thin, and plenty of gravy given with them. 14. Round of beef. This is cut in the same way as a fillet of veal. It should be kept even all over. When helping the fat, be careful not to hack it, but cut it smooth. A deep slice should be taken off before you begin to help, as directed in the edge bone. 15. Brisket of beef. This must be cut lengthwise, quite down to the bone, after separating the outside or first slice, which must be cut pretty thick. 16. Leg of pork. This joint is sent to the table, whether boiled or roasted, as a leg of mutton, roasted and cut up in the same manner. The close, firm flesh about the knuckle is by many reckoned best. 17. Haunch of mutton. This is formed by the leg and part of the loin, cut so as to resemble a haunch of venison, and is to be helped at table in the same manner. 18. Goose. Turn the neck end of the goose towards you, and cut the whole breast in slices on each side of the bird, but only remove them as you help each person, unless the company is so large as to require the legs likewise. Turn the goose on one side, and then take off the leg by putting the fork into the small end of the leg bone, pressing it close to the body, and, having passed the knife in the line E, D, turn the leg back, and, if a young bird, it will easily separate. To take off the wing, put your fork into the small end of the pinion, and press it close to the body. Then, put in the knife at C, and divide the joint taking it down in the direction C, D. Nothing but practice will enable people to hit the joint exactly at the first trial. When the leg and wing of one side are done, go on to the other. Cut off the apron in the line F, E, G. Then take off the merry thought in the line O, I. The neck bones are next to be separated as in a fowl, and all other parts divided the same. 19. A fowl. A boiled fowl's legs are bent inwards, but before it is served, the skewers are to be removed. Lay the fowl on your plate, and place the joints as cut off on the dish. Take the wing off in the direction of A to B, in the annexed engraving, 
only dividing the joint with your knife, and then, with your fork, lift up the pinion, and draw the wings towards the legs, and the muscles will separate, in a more complete form than if cut. Slip the knife between the leg and body, and cut to the bone. Then, with the fork, turn the leg back, and, if the bird is not old, the joint will give way. When the four quarters are thus removed, take off the merry thought from A, and the neck bones, these last by putting in the knife at C, and pressing it under the long broad part of the bone, in the line CB. Then lift it up, and break it off from the part that sticks to the breast. The next thing is to divide the breast from the carcass, by cutting through the tender ribs, close to the breast, quite down to the end of the fowl. Lay the back up, put your knife into the bone, halfway from the neck to the rump, and, on raising the lower part, it will readily separate. Turn the neck towards you, and very neatly take off the two sidesmen, and the whole will be done. As each part is taken off, it should be turned neatly on the dish, and care should be taken that what is left should go properly from the table. The breast and wings are looked upon as the best parts, but the legs are most juicy in young fowls. After all, more advantage will be gained by observing those who carve well, and a little practice, than by any written directions whatever. 20. Partridge This bird is cut up in the same way as a fowl. The best parts are the wings, breasts, and merry thought, but the bird being small, the two letter are not often divided. The wing is considered the best, and the tip is reckoned the most delicate morsel of the whole. 21. Pigeons Pigeons are considered very fine eating. It is usual to cut them in half, either from top to bottom or across. The lower part is generally thought best. 22. Turkey Fix your fork firmly in the lower part of the breast, so as to have full command of the turkey. Slice down on each side of the center of the breast, two or three lines lengthwise with the body. Then, take off the leg on one side, holding the knife in a sloping direction, the point turned towards the end of the body. This done, cut off the wing on the same side, in a line nearly parallel with the length of the turkey. When you have thus separated the wings and legs, take off from the breastbone the parts you before sliced down. Be very attentive in separating the wing, not to cut too near the neck, or you will find yourself interrupted by the neck bone from which the wing must be taken. 23. Cod's Head Fish in general requires very little carving, the fleshy parts being those principally esteemed. A cod's head and shoulders, when in season, and properly boiled, is a very genteel and handsome dish. When cut, it should be done with a fish trowel. The parts about the backbone, or the shoulders, are by far the firmest and best. Take off a piece quite down to the bone, in the direction A, B, C, D, putting in the spoon at A, C, and with each slice of the fish, give a piece of the round, which lies underneath the backbone, and lines it, the meat of which is thin, and a little darker colored than the body of the fish itself. This may be got by passing a spoon under it, in the direction D, F. About the head are many delicate parts, and a great deal of the jelly kind. The jelly part lies about the jawbone, and the firm parts within the head. Some are fond of the palate, and others the tongue, which, likewise, may be got by putting a spoon into the mouth. End of chapter 26 End of The American Housewife by Anonymous